Hello everybody, in this lecture we will solve numerically the heat diffusion equation in two dimensions. The coefficient alpha is called the diffusivity of the medium. We are interested in the steady state solution, so the equation we aim to solve is basically the Laplace's equation. We are going to solve this equation on a rectangular domain and understand how we can solve it on curvilinear meshes. First, let's recall the analytical solutions for this two-dimensional problem that we want to solve. Despite the simplicity of this partial differential equation, its solution is far from trivial, and an analytical solution can be derived only in certain situations. Let's consider the case of a rectangular domain. Our objective is to derive the temperature distribution over the plate under the following conditions. While in the left, right and bottom walls we have the same temperature T1, at the top wall we have a different temperature T2. Using separation of variables we can solve this problem analytically and we obtain the following temperature distribution as a function of x and y. Note that there is a sum in the solution. The more terms we include in the sum, the closest we will get to the correct solution. Here n varies from 1 to 200, which was found to be an acceptable range, as you can see. Great! Let's discretize now the heat diffusion equation using second order central difference schemes in both directions. This discretization of the Laplace operator is also known as the five-point difference operator. The following parameters were used to run our simulation. Now let's write these equations in Python format. So here we have the Laplace operator, we have also the boundary condition, and in the main program we're going to call these two functions. Note that we are dealing with a steady state problem, so when the system reaches the equilibrium state, the changes between one iteration and the next is going to be very small. Therefore, we can stop the simulation when a criterion is verified. It can be shown that the maximum time step delta t that we can allow without the process being unstable is this one. In this figure, we show the comparison between the numerical solution in colors and the exact solution in white. The results show an excellent agreement, validating the numerical methodology. Cool, isn't it? By the way, you can find the Python script that I used in this class on my website. If you liked the video, don't forget to give a thumbs up and ring the bell. Well, so far, we worked on a rectangular computational domain with a uniform rectangular grid. But what if you have to deal with more complex geometries? To treat such problems, we need to make use of transformation techniques. The idea is to find the coordinate transformation which maps the physical domain into the needed computational domain, such that the uniform rectangular grid in the computational domain corresponds to a non-uniform curvilinear grid in the physical domain. To clarify how it's done in practice, let's consider the 2D curved domain as shown in this figure. To solve the heat diffusion equation in this geometry, we know that the polar transformation must be used. In order to derive the explicit polar form of Laplace's equation in 2D, we need to transform the variables x and y and their derivatives from the physical space into r and theta in the computational domain. Let's skip this step and go straight to the Laplace's equation in polar form, the derivation you can find in my book. That is the final equation that we want to solve numerically. It will be discretized by a uniform grid in the computational domain and then using the inverse transformation we will obtain the temperature distribution in the physical domain. This transformation can be visualized in this figure, where the same coordinates are plotted using Cartesian and polar representations. This exercise I'll let you do by yourself. Remember that now your regular computational mesh depends on R and theta. If you want to know more about CFD, check out my book. There, you are going to learn how to solve a potential flow around an airfoil, or even how to build your own three-dimensional CFD solver. Thanks for watching, and I see you in the next lecture.